Hey bag maker, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Danny will be joining me on the set in just a minute. I was glancing through the comments in the chat before the show, lots of chatter going on on YouTube. I saw that Retha mentioned in the comments that she was going to be working on some hand embroidery while watching Social Sunday. Great idea, Retha. Um, I see Kathleen is watching from Michigan. Uh, who else? Pamela is watching from Maine. So thank you so much for joining us for Social Sunday. Danny and I are going to be chatting about a few things and then I'm going to be answering some questions at the end of the show. So if you have a question for me, either a general sewing question, bag making related question, question about a notion or a tool, you can type your question anytime in the comments. Um, a little tip for helping Danny find the questions from among all of the comments. Um, if you could type either a question mark before your question or type it in capital letters. Um, if you forget to do that, no problem. Um, Danny will be joining me in a second and he'll be collecting the questions during the show on this little laptop we've got here. So. Yesterday I decided, since the new patterns were finished, that I would start cleaning the sewing room. It was, uh, I have two small rugs in here and I'm not even joking, like you really couldn't even see the rug underneath all of the fabric. I had books piled up. What I, I don't even know what I had. I was just laying it, coming in the room, laying it on the floor. I have a plant by the doorway and because the stuff was piling up so much, people were walking through and like brushing up against the plant. So I was like, you know what, this has to stop. So yesterday I spent about an hour straightening up. Today, another hour, I figured, you know, just work on it in small chunks until you get it nice and neat. So I'm about 30% uh, done. So I still have a ways to go with tidying up, but uh, hopefully Ooh. I'll finish this week. Hello, Danny. Hey everyone. Thank you for uh, joining me. I know everyone's excited to see you today. Um, Besides cleaning, I also wanted to ask or um, remind you that you can send me recommendations for products or books to review on Social Sunday anytime. So the, the weeks that Danny's not on the show with me, that's the day where I have all the reviews, um, book review week, uh, new fabrics. I see Trishy sa Tris says, literally the best thing about my weekend ending is watching So Sweetness Live. Yay! That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Sarah, would you lower your chair and move in a little bit? Oh, okay. Are we not there even? There you go. Is that better? Um, what I was saying. Oh, if you ever Sorry for interruption. come across a notion that you think looks interesting come over here. or uh, a book, anything that I can review on the show, please email me anytime. Um, I'm always happy to, to look out for new notions and things like that. My email is sarah at soulsweetness.com. That's Sarah with no H. Um, the last couple weeks, I've had a few recommendations for notions which um, I have ordered to review on future shows and so um, yeah if you if you come across anything interesting feel free to email me anytime um, another question that I had for you is uh, the four new patterns that just came out I would like to do a sew along um, obviously we'll start with one of them let me know in the comments out of the four new patterns which one you would like to see a sew along for first um the chickadee backpack which is uh, chickadee chickadee yeah did i say it wrong it just sounded weird when you said it. i don't know hmm. chickadee i would say chickadee. it sounded weird Isn't when that you what said, I said it <laughs> i don't know it's a little crazy sometimes uh the chickadee backpack the starling bag which was the one with the, the zippers on either end um, the Stingray bag, that's the one that came in the two different sizes, or the um, Sky Harbor tote, that was the one with the um, decorative zippers on the side. So let me know in the comments which one you'd like to see a sew along for first, and I'll try to remember to also post a poll uh, over in our Facebook group. Um, so far, I see early Stingrays and Chickadees. Okay, very interesting. All right, so we'll be collecting the votes, and I'll let you know on a future show um, what the first so long choice will be. All right, let's get over to your pick of the week. Uh, my pick of the week is, uh, speaking of chickadee, uh, Amy Hutton had made a chickadee bag and I was, you know, amazed. One, the bag is awesome. Two, the photography is amazing. And three, 
just everything about it. I can't think of three, but everything, all the things. I mean, gosh, you name it. It just looks great. I love the photography. Um, the fabric is really great too. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm just starstruck. I'm looking at it I'm like, wow, what a great job. <laughs> really awesome. I'm still looking at like my mouth. If you guys could see my mouth is open. I'm like, wow, such a nice finish. Great photos too. Amy, I'll wait till the slides are done, but you definitely get two thumbs up. If I had a third arm, I would give you a third thumb up because <laughs> that's amazing. Great job. Great job, Amy. Um, all right, Danny's uh, second favorite part of the Sunday show when he's on the sh show that his favorite, of course, is his pick of the week. Uh, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments um, that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. We really appreciate you joining us for Social Sunday. And um, yeah, thanks so much for uh, continuing to tune in to Social Sunday. All right, uh, have, you, have you gotten a chance to collect a lot of questions or are people mostly commenting uh, about... Uh, they're so long choices. I see a lot of people still are. Um, all right, so I'm going to jump into the questions. Um, if you do have a question, go ahead and type it in the comments anytime. Um, I see Renee says, I bought the teeny tiny tank. What a lifesaver. I reviewed that on the show a couple of years ago. It's this little yellow vacuum cleaner with different nozzles and attachments. And um, what I used mine for was to clean my sewing machine, get all the lint. Actually, I need to use it again. Uh, maybe I'll include that as part of my sewing uh, room tidying up. I'll, I'll get the teeny tiny tank out and clean my uh, sewing machine out because um, it's kind of looking a little bit dusty over there. Um, Cindy says, do you have any advice for new bag designers? I just finished designing my first bag today. Congratulations, Cindy. Congratulations. I'm not sure if you've already seen my video uh, about my design process, including the software I use um, and the steps that I take when designing a bag. Um, if you're interested in finding that video, you can find it either on my website or on YouTube. If you're looking on the So Sweetness YouTube channel, um, I think you can probably just type in the word design and hopefully that video will pop up. Um, I would just say, um, I guess my best advice for either designing patterns, selling bags online, or um, social media is, uh, I guess at least in my opinion, any of those three things, um, it's a long game. So don't pin your hopes on, you know, in the first couple of months, you know, getting tons of followers, getting lots of sales, um, being super successful. Just be patient and it'll come to you. Uh, it sure will if you put in the work and you're patient, uh, you'll get there, whatever your goal is, either designing, selling bags, or um, social media. So uh, yeah, just, we've been doing being this Being consistent, for, I think it's important. Yeah, you know? and being consistent, being consistent also. Being consistent, you know, follow through. Um, I started selling patterns in 2013, but I started my blog in 2010, so that's 11 years now, and we've been doing the videos for five years, and it certainly wasn't, I don't even remember the followers we had when we first, obviously we started from zero with YouTube uh, subscribers, but it's just, you know, patience and showing up consistently, uh, like Danny said, and uh, it'll come. Juliet says, Sarah, do you ever go to sewing expos? It's been a while. I attended one in the Chicago area. Gosh, it's been many years. I used to go to trade shows, uh, Quilt Market, which was uh, twice a year. Uh, it's been a few years since I've done that, but um, it's very interesting going to either an expo or a trade show to see. Um, it's a great place to find different uh, products, notions, tools, things like that. Um, and to be able to see things demonstrated, whether it's a ruler or uh, a certain tool. So um, yeah, there's certainly a lot of fun. Um, Debbie is wondering what rivet press do you recommend? So there's, uh, Minkus Margo. Yes, there's certainly options out there, but, um, Minkus Margo, it's an Etsy shop is where I purchased mine from, as well as, uh, the dyes, rivets, and other supplies. Um, if you check our Facebook group, um, there's, um, been posts in the past of other recommendations where people bought their rivet press besides that. Um, but I only have mine, uh, to compare it to, so... Um, again, that was uh, Minkus Margot on Etsy. 
Um, Maritha says, how is the new horse doing? Um, Olive is doing great. Um, she had a couple of days off, a couple of extra days off this week because uh, she had some work done by the vet, but um, my trainer wrote her yesterday, everything's going great. Um, she's, uh, yeah, she's a very good girl and uh, Violet loves visiting her every week. Debbie says, uh, Sarah was an overnight success, 11 years of overnights. Yes, um, certainly long nights. Uh, do you want to, I'll let you do a little bit of talking. Oh, Early I days. I like clicking the buttons. <laughs> Early days of sewing, maybe you can describe like yeah, Sarah what used my... to stay up late. I, you know, I'm still, uh, you know, I prefer to stay up late, wake up late. Doesn't work so well now that we have to take kids back to school, but uh, Sarah used to do that with me. We'd both stay up late together and it was great. I mean, she'd probably cut off to like midnight and that'd be mm -hmm. her time and then she'd go to bed. Obviously, I'd stay a little later, but yeah, she was always, I would call it the lab because that's where I feel like her job is in the lab. <laughs> performing you know purse duties and stuff uh but no she was very you know into it um i don't do that anymore though no not at all she's in bed by nine o'clock now her and violet watch an hour's shows and she goes to bed and violet will say you know you fell asleep and it's like yeah just keep watching <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's how it works you know is there the questions on the board oh sorry i was waiting for you i was glancing over here um uh, Casey says, how often do you oil your new Juki? Um, first of all, as far as oiling and sewing machines go, you always want to check your manual. Um, however, for me, I'm not as sewing as often as I was years ago when Danny was talking about me staying up late. I was sewing more often then, but um, I am probably oiling my machine based on my, because it's based more on my usage, maybe once a week or so, maybe a little bit less often. Um, I got some advice on that from my sewing machine technician a few years ago. And so I was uh, previously oiling like every other day, which is what I thought I was supposed to be doing. And, it, and he said, you know, you're oiling a little bit too much because it's kind of leaking. I can see like how much, you know, oil you've been putting in it. So um, always follow the advice of your manual and or your sewing machine technician. Lori said, Sarah, which of your patterns would you recommend for a knitting project bag? So um, there's a few options. I designed a pattern specifically for knitting. It's called the Yarnminder bag and it has three different styles of bag depending on how, um, what size of a bag you want and how detailed you want it to be. So check that one out if you're interested. There's other bags that people have uh, modified to hold knitting projects. I'm trying to think. Um, let me know, because I know there's so many of you that have made a Sew Sweetness bag for your knitting projects. Let us know in the comments which one you used and or modified, and maybe Danny can look out for a couple of those and put those on the screen. Donalyn says, who are your favorite indie pattern companies for clothing? It's been a while since I've made some clothing. Um, I'm gonna turn around for just a second because my clothing patterns are behind me and because uh, I'm drawing a blank, to be honest. Um, I remember enjoying, um, I like Closet Core, um, formerly Closet Case, um, By Hand London. I don't think they're designing as many patterns these days, but I have a bunch of their paper patterns from back in the day. Um, trying to think what else. Um, shoot, I'm kind of drawing a blank. Uh, Serendipity Studio, I've made a lot of case patterns in the past. What else? Which ones did you say, Ray? Um, I said Closet Core, By Hand London. Um, Jolly Patterns are really good. I have a few of those. Um, the Crafty Gemini sells some of those uh, on her website as well as some video classes for those patterns. Um, that one's spelled J-A-L-I-E. Uh, there's a whole bunch more that I'm just blanking on. Uh, feel free to email me if you'd like more specifics. What I know about there's... the dress ones you used to make? Uh, I, Is that the one you said? Yeah, I named a couple of those, I, yeah. I, I thought there was one that you didn't name, and I can't think of the name off the top of my head. Yeah, that's one area I haven't visited for a few years. Hmm. Um, oh, Seamwork is another good one. Um, the website should be seamwork.com, and they come out with, uh, they have a lot of strong basics patterns that they're coming out with every month. Um, you know what I was thinking of, too? Mm -hmm. um, sorry to interrupt, but the joggers. Who, you know, you made them for yourself and Violet? Yeah. That's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, buy, uh... It's a tough one, right? True Bias. That one's True Bias. Okay. 
Gosh. Okay. Anyway, Seamark's a good one. That's um, the parent company of that one is Colette Patterns. Um, Dawn says, can you piece together foam and use it in a bag? Will the bag be strong with pieced foam? You can um, sort of assemble scraps of foam. Um, my favorite method for doing that is to use uh, seam tape. Um, Pelon makes a good seam tape. It's sort of like a knit mesh looking tape almost. And you want to just butt those pieces up and then apply the tape. You can apply it on both sides. Um, so you have less of a sort of a, a, a join showing in the finished bag. Um, and if necessary, you can trim those pieces so they butt up nicely rather than um, say if you have sort of a slightly curved piece and a straight piece, you want those to join neatly. So if you need to trim them with your rotary cutter to get a straight edge, um, you can do that first before using the, the seam tape. I see a few Oslo craft bags. Yes, much, I think that's guess. a good one. Um, the question about um, a knitting bag, the Oslo craft bag, which is a free pattern and video, um, that one's for newsletter subscribers. So if you're not already subscribed to my newsletter, you can go to sewsweetness.com. There's a tab at the top that says newsletter and you can subscribe and get that free pattern. Um, Faye says, will you be making a pattern for a serger carrying case? Um, I sort of have it on my list, but I'm not sure when I will get to that. I do have the rolling bag pattern for the sewing machine, but obviously the serger is more square and compact than that. Um, so in short, it is on my list. I'm just not sure when uh, I'll be coming out with that. Terry says, does the cork that you sell need interfacing? So it depends on the project that you're sewing with and what kind of structure you want in the finished bag. I often will use the same interfacing as called for in the pattern just because I like a lot of structure. The cork fabric is backed with a cotton polyester blend of fabrics. So if you want to use it for say like an unlined project, such as we have some short videos, um, six quick cork projects, they're 10 minute, about 10 minute projects. And a lot of those are unlined projects. Um, so um, for those, I didn't use interfacing. And um, like I said, those are quick projects and those are unlined. Chandra says, how do you store your zipper by the yard? Uh, I'm kind of embarrassed that I just have a drawer and I just kind of shove them in there. I need to come up with a better method for that, but I guess I just haven't had time to, to think it over. I would like to come up with something nicer looking because it's hard to find what I'm looking for in the drawer and then the pulls, having to locate the pulls. So um, definitely need to get on that for a better solution. Let me know though, um, and also feel free to email you if you have a really good tip for storing the zipper by the yard. And again, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. Um, Stacy says, question, can you sew in fusible foam such as Bozal? Bozal, yes, you can treat it as a sew-in interfacing if you'd like to. You'll just attach it um, like I do with the By Annie Soft and Stable sewing using um, an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You may want to be considered of where the fusible side is facing. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I'm not sure that what the best way to go about facing that fusible side, especially if you're treating it as a sew-in because um, I think you should be okay to have the, the adhesive against the wrong side of the fabric. Um, you'll be ironing the bag when it's finished, but once it's turned right side out, so that should sort of eliminate um, extra wrinkles or dimples in the fabric um, if you're ironing it at the very end. Dalva says, are there other sizes for the chickadee frames? I have some frames, but not quite the two and three quarters of an inch. That's a great question, Dalva. Um, so first off, some people have been making their own frames for the chickadee backpack. And some people have found, um, especially people in um, not in the United States, such as um, in the UK, um, in Australia, some have been able to locate frames that are just uh, slightly smaller. And I feel like if it's just a small amount smaller, I think it should work out. Um, if you maybe have like a one inch difference or more, I think it'll be too big of a difference to use uh, the frames in that project, um, if that helps. Charlotte is asking, after the zipper is installed, do you top stitch just the outer fabric or both the outer and the lining together? So that's a great question. It may depend on the application, but usually when I'm top stitching a zipper after I've sewn it to the exterior and the lining fabrics, 
Usually I top stitch um, both layers of fabric um, and the interfacing, uh, so everything together. And I usually like to coordinate my top thread to match the exterior fabric and the bobbin thread to match the lining fabric so everything sort of blends in rather than having, for instance, um, maybe black thread for your black outer fabric and having a black thread for, say if you have like a pink fabric underneath, those black stitches will really stand out. But if you swap it in the bobbin to the pink thread to match your pink fabric, then um, it'll look nice and blended. Cindy says, do you have any tips on how to make the sides and corners of box bags so they are straight? Um, trying to see if I have any box bags. Can you pass me that oh, blue one on the end? The Bar? pouch, yeah, that one right there. Is that this one? No, the one on the other end. You want me to get it? I'm gonna use a tool. <laughs> okay, so this is a Brumby pouch from Minikin season three. Um, hopefully this is what you meant by a, by a box bag or pouch. So what I like to do is, first off, I like to sort of like where the corners are, I sort of like to finger press so it forms a straight line. And then you can, of course, follow that up with your iron. Same thing with the, the bottom of the pouch. And then the sides, you can either iron it like this on the end of your ironing board or what I often have been doing lately in lieu of ironing, but kind of like a finger press is I'll just put some wonder clips on the edges for maybe an hour or two. And then when I take those wonder clips off, then there's a nice press edge. Hopefully this is what you meant by a, a box bag. But it's really important to press all of the edges, even the ones on the top and bottom, because that's what'll give the um, boxy shape. Carla says, <clears throat> do you have a list of beginner bag making supplies or a list of pantry items you should always have on hand? That's a really great question. I actually, I don't, but I, I'll try to put together a video of um, like a beginner bag making toolbox. Uh, maybe we can do a video or some sort of compilation or blog post uh, for that uh, on a future show. Toolkit. <clears throat> Ann says, how do you discipline yourself to stick to manageable projects? Those darn squirrels bite me and I go off into craft tangents. Cross-stitch, scrunchies, wallets, wood burning, embroidery. Yeah, I have, um, it's quite difficult with, I'm trying to push my chair forward here. It's quite difficult with, it, with all of the different options out there, not just for sewing, but other um, hand projects. In fact, now that you mentioned it, I was, while I was tidying up, I found a half finished cross stitch that I started working on probably in the spring. And on our couch right now, there's a quilt that's, I just need to sew four seams and the quilt would be done, but Violet's been using it sort of to, I don't know if she's using it as a backrest or whatever, but now it's all wrinkly. I was trying to keep it nice and ironed and flat. So I guess I'm not the best at following that advice, but, um, yeah, it's kind of tough sometimes uh, having the, mm, just to keep yourself on track. I don't know. Do you I was find... grabbing a bag, sorry, but it's on your side. Someone Camera played tricks on me. I'm like, oh, it's the one on the left side of the screen, mm -hmm. but it's actually right side. So what are you asking me? Um, I don't know. Do you have a problem with starting a task and not finishing it? No, the problem is usually starting the task. Once I start it and I can finish it, the problem is starting tasks. Thousand percent. Um, I have a Janome HD9. What do you have? I do have a Janome. I don't use it very often. It's the... I can't read it from here. Let me jump up real quick. But Sarah uses a Juki TL2200 <laughs> QVP and the newer Juki... I don't remember the 18, uh, QVP 18. So the Janome I have is the 6700P. I got it as sort of a backup machine or when I want to, speaking of sewing clothing, when I want to sew clothing so there's other stitch options because the Jukis that I have are straight stitch only, but I haven't sewn clothing in a while, so I really haven't. That machine right now is sort of, if you could see it right now, there's just a couple stacks of paper uh, that it's being used to hold up. So uh, yeah, probably need to sew a couple garments to put that to use. If you are looking for a Juki, you wanna visit So Many Things. Um, they have a great selection of Juki sewing machines. Yeah, and it's spelled um, So, S-E-W, mini, like small, M-I-N-I, -I, and then things. Uh, that's their website. 
Um, Nola says, love the orange and white bag with birds behind you. What is a good starter bag to try? That's the one I want to grab. That's, uh, oh. Yeah, because everything's a uh, mirror image for us. This is one of the new patterns, the Sky Harbor Tote. And this fabric is, actually both of these fabrics are designed by Sarah Watts. The fabric line for this is called Florida. And uh, a good beginner bag. Um... If you're looking for a good general beginner bag, um, the Baker Street bag is a free pattern and video that we usually recommend that's a great uh, starter bag or for a confident beginner. If you're looking at one of the new patterns, the, the easiest out of those four new patterns, um, in my opinion, is the Starling bag. Jan says, I love Harris Tweed, but it is so expensive. Can you recommend another good brand? Thank you. I, I'm not familiar with other brands similar to Harris Tweed. I have purchased a couple of pieces in the past um, from Etsy and they shipped, I believe they shipped here from the UK, but um, I just bought smaller pieces. So I think I just bought half yard pieces and I chose a smaller bag project to use it for just so that I wouldn't have to buy a lot or large pieces. Um, if anyone has a suggestion for wool or something similar to Harris Tweed, let us know in the comments or maybe a website that sells something like that. Um, Epi says, is there a brand of rulers you prefer and recommend? Actually, I saw there was a thread a few days ago in the Facebook group about a different brand of rulers that I use. I can't remember if it was Quilter Select, um, but I use the Omni Grip rulers. Um, I just, I've been using them for so many years. I'm just used to the uh, placement of the numbers. It has a, a slight grippy on the back, which is the, the neon color that you see. Um, the two rulers that I have that I use all the time, I use a six inch by 12 inch ruler. And then here's my bigger ruler. This one's six inch by 24, just in case I need uh, bigger cuts, like for straps or side panels, things like that. Um, let's see, Elizabeth says, Sarah, how do you store your fabrics by color collection designers or something else? That's a great question. So I'm using a mixture of all of those three things. So if I'm buying enough of a fabric from a certain designer to warrant like its own stack or its own section, then I'll have um, a stack uh, for that or from the fam same fabric company. So for instance, I have a couple of stacks of fabric from Art Gallery Fabrics um, Tula Pink really has her own bookshelf by herself, Tula Pink Fabric. Um, I have a section for solids. I have a section for um, sort of monochromatic prints. I really like Moda Grunge fabrics, and so I have a Moda Grunge section. Um, if I don't have enough fabric from a certain designer or fabric company to warrant like its own stack, um, I have a couple of groupings by theme, like I have two stacks of horse fabrics, I have a stack of uh, animal fabrics. Um, I think that's about, yeah, I think that about runs the gamut. And then I have uh, a couple of stacks for like miscellaneous things, um, things that don't fall into any of the other categories. Um, Sharon says, check thrift stores for Harris Tweed Coats. Oh, many thank you. Many people said that. Oh, many people said that? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Those are the comments I was cycling through. Thank you, Sharon. Um, June says, Sarah, are you going to the So Magical Expo in Orlando this weekend? Um, I wish we were. I'm actually not. Um, I'm sure the weather is great over there. Actually, the weather in Chicago has been Sarah, you didn't see. They nice. have um, like landmarks. Mm -hmm. And you might have seen this because I know you mm -hmm. follow Disney so much. But there's like landmarks in the different parks. And then they have new um, Disney bands mm -hmm. and they light up when you hit the different landmarks. I don't know if it tracks it. Oh, that sounds very interesting. I, I haven't heard cool. about that. That sounds yeah. really cool. Um, Shannon says, are you excited for the new Tula Pink fabric line? I can't wait for the seatbelt webbing. Yes, we will have the seatbelt webbing. I've already ordered it for our shop. I've ordered, um, like the biggest rolls that they have of, of all of the colors. Um, in case you missed that, uh, Tula showed it on her social media and it's made by Renaissance Ribbons. So you can see the different um, webbings on the Renaissance Wh Ribbons website. And as soon as we have it in stock in the shop, I'll let you know on the show and on social media. Teresa says, what is the best way to gift one of your patterns someone? That's a really great question, Teresa. So we do sell gift certificates in the shop. We have them available in a whole different um, array of dollar amounts um, to correspond with the items we sell in the shop. So for instance, 
Like if you want to gift one pattern, we have a $9 gift certificate option. If you want to gift a pattern and video, we have a $15 option. We also have some traditional amounts too, like $20, $50, $100. Um, So the best way to do that would be to purchase a gift certificate so that um, your friend or family member can use the gift certificates to, to make the purchase using their account. So um, that their pattern or video, whatever they're buying, will they'll always have access it, access to it in their own account rather than having it be in your account. If that makes sense. Wendy Art says, "When uh, what can you do with scrap fusible fleece and other interfacing suggestions for small projects or projects that use smaller pieces? So if you have some scraps of fusible interfacings, either um, Pellon Shape Flex." fusible fleece, um, similar to what we talked about earlier with the foam interfacing, but you likely won't need to use the seam tape. You can just, since those are fusible, you can just butt those two interfacings up um, next to each other on the wrong side of the fabric and then fuse them in place so that they're not overlapping. And like I mentioned with the foam, if you need to do some trimming so that the the edges um, butt up nicely and um, there's no overlap, you can just go ahead and use your rotary cutter and cut a, a straight line across. Teresa says, do you have a rolling duffel bag pattern? I don't have a rolling duffel bag pattern, but uh, we do have the sewing machine travel bag. Um, If you wanted to um, make one of my duffel bags and put it on a a luggage rolling cart, you could add um, a luggage sleeve. I was gonna say you have a video for that sleeve. The luggage. I do. Uh, yeah. So if you go to the So Sweetness YouTube channel and in the search box, if you type in luggage sleeve, um, that video demonstration will come up. And I, a, a lot of my technique videos, I try to formulate them so that you can add whatever that item is to any bag, be it a luggage sleeve, a zipper, a side pocket. And so um, that's my thought process for a lot of the videos, including the lu- luggage sleeve one. Um, Susan says, do you recommend starching fabric before you begin a bag? Um, I guess it's personal preference, Um, especially if I have a really wrinkly fabric or some fabrics have a little bit of a drape or a little bit um, nicer to work with if they're starched. Um, That is an option. How often do you starch your fabrics? Not often, right? Well, I use that. um, Right now I have the Best Press spray, which is a starch spray, and I keep it by my ironing board and... Um, when I'm ready to cut out pieces, I'll start small areas of the uh, fabric before I iron and then cut them out. So um, either Best Press um, is, an, is an option and Flatter Spray is another option as well for starching. Flatter is a starch alternative though. Um, Barbara says, what pattern would you recommend for a laptop bag? So there's a few options. I have the Lilium laptop bag. Also the um, grab and go go sleeve, that's from Minikin season one. Thank you, I didn't even think about that one. Um, The triple threat briefcase um, is a good one for a laptop. Um, Those are the three that jumped to mind. uh, The triple threat I did feature, I think on the last show, my pick Mm -hmm. of the week. That one was made of leather. That was a really awesome, Yeah, yeah, yeah. if you wanna see what it would look like, I would definitely watch last week's, two weeks ago show. Um, Faces, can the sewing machine bag be altered? Um, Yes, in fact, we do have uh, blog posts up on the blog how to um, modify the sewing machine travel bag. So if you go to sewsweetness.com, across the top there's some tabs. Um, One of the tabs says tutorials, and if you hover over that one, um, there will be some sub-tabs. Pattern hacks. You click on that and then there will be all the pattern hacks will come up including the one for the sewing machine travel bag um do you have a pattern for an aliso mini iron case i don't but i've heard um and again this is just hearsay but i've heard that people were either making or considering that uh the kismet trinket boxes for that pattern the the square version um, again, I haven't made that myself for that iron, but um, that's what I remember hearing in the Facebook group. Judy says, whatever bag would be the easiest for a beginner. Um, that Baker Street bag, um, that's a good uh, beginner friendly bag. Also the, maybe if you're looking for one for one to step up from that one, um, the Oriole bag's another option. And those are both free and those both um, have video options as well. Uh, 
Um, Melissa says, do you have a video for applying OD coat? My first attempt came out uneven. Yes, I do. So if you go to the um, So Sweetness YouTube channel and type in OD coat, uh, that video should come up. Um, let's see. Uneven. So I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't Maybe know what I was going to say. put on thick or thin, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you could probably even do is find something that's got like, um, uh, you know, I think like tile grout there. If when you apply it on there, it's, it's got like um, a blade and each blade has a notch. It's like a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. So when you're applying it, it keeps that thickness even, in, even, even across the surface. I know if there's something you could use. Oh, I don't know. I used like a, I just used a paintbrush for what I did. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's something like that, uh, a tool to make it more even when you apply it. Lori says, which Juki is the best for piecing and bags? So I have three Jukis. They're pretty much essentially the same. Um, if you want to check out the videos on those, you can find those on my YouTube channel. Um, if you go to the So Sweetness channel, there's a search box. You can either actually just type in the word Juki and then those videos should come up. Um, Jackie says, which Juki is your favorite? Um, the newest one, the QVP 18 is probably my slight favorite just because it has the adjustable tension, the dimmer light, and it has the, the floater for different thicknesses. So when you talk with your hands, Sarah, I was like, why is the focus going oh, out? Oh, sorry. It grabs <laughs> your hands when you're yeah, on your side. I, it I saw that out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, what is, she's awful using um, her hands a lot today. I was like, what it's, is going it, on? it's actually called the micro lifter, I think is the proper name for it. Um, Janet says, is any type of vinyl good for a beginner or is a certain weight preferable? Um, that's a great question. I would say marine vinyl would be on the thicker side. So um, perhaps something thinner, a thinner vinyl would be easier to work with for a first attempt. Um, make sure you use either a Teflon foot or a walking foot um, so it'll glide across your uh, vinyl rather than sticking to it. Um, Jerry says, are your bag fabrics mostly quilting cotton fabric or are they home deck fabric? That's a great question. I would say maybe 80% quilting cotton and the other 20% either canvas fabric, decorator weight fabric. Um, I will occasionally use a garment fabric, um, but I'll add some extra ShapeFlex interfacing to it so it takes out the, the stretch and the drape. There's a few um, Odie coat comments on you. Please read them. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, thank you, Melissa. Uh, Melissa says, use a gift card to apply the OD coat. That's perfect. Um, Nancy says, put parchment paper on top of the fabric when applying the OD coat to smooth it out. That's awesome. And I, yeah, I never would have thought of either of those things. Misty says, my OD coat wasn't even to use a credit card for application. That's awesome. I'm sure everyone has at least uh, a used gift card lying around that they could use for something like that. Um, Laura says the best mesh vinyl or stretch. I prefer, um, I pretty much always use the, By Annie's. yeah, exactly. The mesh from by Annie's, uh, it's, it's only slightly stretchy in one direction, but not stretchy, like difficult to work with. Um, actually, you know what, since you're on the show and I can jump up, let me grab it real quick. I mean, you could always jump up when I'm not on the show either. Uh, <laughs> Wish I could answer some of these questions. Oh, I'll read this one. It's a comment. It's from Jan Peterson. Just a quick thank you for all your wonderful videos you've done. I've learned so much from you. I think she's talking to me. Jan, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's the By Annie's Mesh. It comes in half your pieces, so it's 18 inches by 54 inches, I think. Yeah, 18 by 54. Uh, comes in 14 different colors. We sell all the colors on the website, and we sell the fold over elastic to, to match. And so what I was talking about, the that it stretches in one direction, so the the long the long way, it, it stretches slightly. As you can see, it's stretching. But in the other direction, it doesn't really stretch at all. So um, depending on what type of pocket you're making, you'll want to pay attention to the stretch. And if, if it applies to what you're doing, have the stretch go uh, Horizontal. horizontally um, rather than vertically. Especially if you're making a mesh elastic pocket, you want it to be stretching in this direction. Deborah says, what do you use fusible fleece for? So fusible fleece is great for smaller projects or if you want a project that has some 
um, slouchiness to it or softness to it um, in the chickadee backpack pattern that came out recently the I used fleece for this just the side panels and then the rest of the bag was made with uh, foam interfacing so I try to think about the reason I use fleece in the side of this bag is because this zipper panel um, because there's a metal frame in this this bag um, the sides kind of collapse down when you close the zipper and so I wanted the fusible fleece to be there so it wasn't like a a stiff looking side when the, the zipper was closed, if that makes sense. Um, let's see, do you have any more patterns for a stylish clutch bag? Actually, mm, clutches are something that I don't often visit. I do have a free pattern for a clutch. It's called the Discotech Clutch. You can find that on my website. Um, under the tutorials tab, there's a sub tab for bags. Um, it'll be in that section on the website. I'm trying to think if I've done any more. I think I had maybe one or two clutches in my first book, uh, Windy City Bags, but other than that, uh, I don't have a lot. Oh, from Minikin Season 2, there was a clutch called the Epicure Pouch. Um, I've seen a lot of people use that one for weddings or um, like bridesmaids gifts, actually. Chris says, what iron would you recommend that is not over $100 but is still good? So the Singer Expert Finish Iron is the one that I have. I've had it since 2013, and I'm almost 100% sure that it's maybe $60 or $70. I haven't looked lately, but I feel like it's got to be for sure under $100. Yeah, you know, there's so many nice comments <clears throat> coming towards me, so I might as well post them in a second. <laughs> if I'll let you continue first, but thank you everyone for very nice comments. Um, Janet says, could you add studs to the Sky Harbor bag to push in the side edges, maybe leaving out the zips? Push in the side edges. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. It's sometimes my brain is just not working quickly when we're on set and all the lights are shining on me. Feel free to email me after the show. Um, I, I guess I just need a little bit of an elaboration. Uh, I'm happy to, to help answer that question though. Do you know uh, yeah, what she means? Grab the bag. Okay. This is my guess. Okay. You saw that you have the edges for the two fabrics right here. Look. Yeah. So instead of having this, have a this these two bind together. You know, like using binding for this instead, but use rivets down the line. That's my guess. Oh, just on the side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For for just visual, if you just wanted to have rivets down here, but she says push the side edges in. So I'm not sure that that's what she means. Feel free to email me after the show, yeah, and know. I'm I'm happy to to help. Um, my email is Sarah at soulsweetness.com, and that's Sarah with no H. That would look pretty cool though with the rivets, uh, like what you said along the zipper edge. Make me think like the rock star bag. Um, Evelyn says, Danny, I love your pick of the week. It's actually the bag that made up my mind to buy the patterns. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Evelyn. Um, Jesse says, Danny, you have a great personality that's definite that definitely adds to the show. You know, I'm I'm loving all this. If you want your name on our show, <laughs> you just have to pay me a compliment. I will gladly put it up there. Sarah gets so many, you know, I just you know, I gotta grab the ones I can get. Uh, yeah, that's, I think that's pretty much it for the week, sir. All right. Well, I apologize. Hold on before oh. Sarah cuts off. Don't forget our four pack bundle is expiring this week. So if you have not purchased it yet, this is your time to go out and get it. Um, it expires Wednesday, uh, October 6th, uh, depending on what part of your, the world you're in, uh, in the United States, it'll be end of the day, October 6th. And to be honest, I usually go to bed on October 6th. And then when I wake up in the morning, then I sort of take it out of stock. So you have until I wake up in the morning on Thursday, I suppose. Um, and if you're interested in seeing what patterns are in the bundle, or we did a sort of a trailer video with close up views of all the features of the four bags, um, the link is in the description in case you're checking that out. And again, that's uh, available until October 6th. And the next so along will be for one of those patterns, we're still, the verdict is still out. I'm going to check the comments after the show to see what everyone was requesting for the first sew along project from the new patterns you know and... next week i could since i'm not up here okay i could do a poll that people can click on oh. and vote during the show okay and we could put the results on okay so i, I guess maybe good. we'd have to post it earlier because it'd be only for the live viewers uh we could also additionally post it in the facebook group and sort of combine the two okay uh results sure yeah okay um all right so uh we'll be back out at least I will be back live on the show next Sunday. Danny will be behind the camera. Um, Where Sarah likes me. It's my cage. 
<laughs> this little area over here. You he guys can't the, see. He is the smallest little corner of the room. Um, I didn't intend, you know, for it to be like that. It just sort of, uh, he was nice and suggested, you know, you should have this side and you should also have over there. So it just ended up like that. Um, anyway, my... It's not how I remember, but we'll go with that's the right <laughs> answer. <laughs> Um, so the giveaway for tonight is for, oh, let me announce the winner from last oh, week's giveaway. What great colors those are. Yeah, they are. Um, last week's winner from last week's giveaway prize, um, is Ingrid Stolp. So congratulations, congratulations. to Ingrid. Ingrid. Um, feel free to email me after the show so that I can get you set up with your prize. And, uh, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. Today's giveaway prize is a fat quarter bundle of fabrics designed by Sari Diddy. The fabric line is called Paradigm. As you can see, it's um, nice, beautiful rainbow colors. I think I like this. I don't know. The turquoises always stand out to me. Um, so one r randomly drawn winner will win this bundle. You have until the end of the day this Saturday to get your entry in. And your form of entry will be um, any comments on this show um either on facebook or youtube we put all the comments together and i draw one randomly drawn winner and um, i'll give you an extra question to um, answer in the comments um, as an, another form of entry and my question is what are three words um, that best describe you so just leave your three words in the comments um i'll let you think about your three words for a second I'm glad you said that because i was like i hope she's not gonna ask me that <laughs> my three words uh, that best describe me are quiet daydreaming I thought that one would make you laugh he's always looking at me and I'm staring off into space and he's like oh you're while daydreaming. talking to her mind you <laughs> <laughs> um my third word about me is uh creative <laughs> what about you uh loyal caring and loud yeah those are good those yeah. are good ones all right um thank you so much for joining us for social Sunday uh we hope you have a great week and happy sewing bye everyone thanks for showing up bye everybody mm -hmm.